Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning to you. Good morning to you.
and just call your friends, share the page for your friends and family to join us here at Hope of Glory Network TV on Facebook, Hope of Glory Network Radio on Ghana Web, Hope of Glory Prayer Line. We are live. Hey, Virgin Pasta. Hey, my sweet dad. Esther. Let's dance. Oba Pasewa. Let's dance. Rejoice. Bonnie, let's dance. And Tokwa. And ya, I'm holding for the old. Our real, our real, I am seeing you more educated. Hey. Yes, you Christina, good morning. Mr. Opoku Emmanuel, join us here on Hope of Glory Prayer Line. Edmund, good morning. Yes, Awari awu kwe se yesu ni mwa enye yo. Precious, good morning. Anita, good morning. U.S. a good morning. To me, chair, good morning. I'm an how be a now a good afternoon. Hey, Victoria Saki, good morning. Faustina, good morning. Oh, him, Paddy, a dear, or man, any Jew on whom we breathe. Mama Yesu Virgin Pastor The only Virgin Pastor in Ghana Yay! 
Mami Obolo, good morning. Ha, please share the page, share the page, and let's get a couple of people in addition before we start. We're going to start very soon, so it's going to be very interesting today. So don't go away. It's going to be the inner man is fully conscious between death and resurrection. The inner man is fully conscious between death and resurrection is going to be the continuation of be careful of those who preach and teach there is no hell. This is the fifth part of our teaching. So don't go away. Make sure you get it and get it right. God richly bless you. Jesus on China, Maba. Yo, Erade on China, Yaba. Lord Jesus, we have come to your presence and we thank you. We give you glory. We praise your name for making it possible for us to come to your presence together again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bless your name. Father, I thank you and I continue to commit this morning program into your hands. I commit my listeners and all those that are watching me into your hands. We ask for more grace in the name of Jesus in your presence. If somebody is going through any difficulties or sickness is troubling somebody's mm -hmm. life, I pray that, Lord, there will be freedom in their homes, in their lives, in their finances, in their marriages. Jehovah God Almighty, we lift your name. Up and I say, my God, use me to bless someone this morning in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Raphael, good morning. Thank all of you for joining. Unchana ma ba Mama Terry, Mama Terry, you are the one I'm waiting for. Good morning. Yeah, you need to cry, Jesus, 
Satan, I am. Oh, Lord, we have come to your presence and we thank you again in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, sisters and brothers, we're going to continue uh, as usual. It is still the same topic. That is number five of be careful of those who preach and teach there is no hell. That is number five today. Be careful of those who preach and teach that there is no hell. You've got to be very careful of them. And then number five is that the inner man is fully conscious between death and resurrection. If you quite remember yesterday, hello, hi, hi, come, come on. on. If you quite remember yesterday, I talked with the one. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yesterday I talked about the spirit of man. The spirit of or oh, the material and the spiritual man is clearly distinguished when it comes to the physical and the spirit. There are distinction between them, and I explain it in very detail. We also have learned about the three stages of death. Physical death, uh, sorry, uh, spiritual death first and physical death and eternal death. We also talked more about immortal, which we explain as immortality, incorruptible, non-ending, non-decaying life, live forever. So today we are going to continue. We're going to continue the fifth part or section of our teaching and that is the inner man is fully conscious between death and resurrection. So let's pull our Bibles and begin to ask our self question, who is the inner man? Because the subsection we're going to talk about is the inner man is fully conscious between death and resurrection. And remember yesterday, I make emphasis on Jehovah Witnesses teaching and SDA teaching concerning the consciousness of man. These are the guys who teaches that they teaches so sleep, meaning when you die, when you die, you are dead. There is no hope for the dead. That is their teaching. And that is why you get to be very careful. And I will continue to say it again that you get to be very careful. This young man that is called himself evangelist on social media, evangelists are there who also teaches there is no hell. I'm yet to watch one of his videos that says there is no Jesus Christ or something, which I wrote somewhere. I'm going to uh, watch it today and I'll come and tell you about it. He's saying some terrible things, which you, you must be very careful. Don't worry about those that he's condemning. And he is saying this one is not a man of God. This, is, this one is illuminati or whatever language or don't mind about that. Let's focus on the word of God. Let's talk and preach and teach the word of God, the truth. That is what is important. So I wanted to open to the book of First Peter chapter 3 because we're talking about the inner man. Somebody say inner man. That means... 
there is somebody inside you there is someone inside you that you don't see him he is the one that is called the inner man so we're going to read about him prophetess god bless you first peter chapter 3 and then let's take it from verse number one because let's read verse three that will make it uh, good verse three and verse four Hey, Gina, God bless you. You are doing a wonderful, uh, a wonderful work in Ghana. But let's keep on warning and expose the false prophets and the false teachers, the false pastors, the false evangelists, the false apostles, especially who teaches that there is no hell. Evangelists are there. Let's warn him and let's expose his demonic teaching because anybody who teaches that there is no hell has the doctrine of demons okay we're going to go detail today so don't go away first peter chapter 3 verse number 3 and 4 says do not let your adornment be merely outward arranging the hair wearing gold or putting on fine apparel rather verse 4 says rather let it be the hidden person the hidden person of the heart in other translation the hidden person is also known as the inner man the inner man the man that is hidden inside of you that is the one we're talking about that is your soul that is your spirit that is the one that make you a human being a living soul and we are saying that the inner man is conscious let me show it where we are saying that the inner man is fully conscious between the time people die and then the, and then the time jesus christ will come back that is the resurrection time the inner man is fully conscious fully conscious means that when you die, the body corrupts, decay. But the spirit continues to live, continue to breathe. The spirit that lives in you continues to have life. So the, the spirit never dies. It never dies. Do you agree that the spirit never dies? Do you know why? Because God created man in his own image. Therefore, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And God never dies. So the spirit that God created us or created in us that make us a living soul never dies. And that is why yesterday, when we were trying to distinguish between the physical body and the spirit we separated them you remember that we were able to separate the spirit and the body with the word of god and then we can see from the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 7 that initially god formed man with the dust of the earth he formed the man with the clay you see that is how god did. it's like a, an artist making a drawing a statue so human beings were like a statue right from the beginning and then after decorating the statue 
Then the Bible says, and God breathed life into his nostrils. Then he became a living soul. So there is difference between the soul and then the body. That is why today we are here to learn that the soul is fully conscious. The soul is the inner man. He is fully conscious between death and resurrection. A lot of our loved ones, our family members, our friends are dead. And they are still in their graves waiting for the day of resurrection. But until the day of resurrection, they still have life somewhere. And that is why I said either they have life waiting in paradise or they have life waiting in somewhere in the comp compartment of hell for their final judgment to the lake of fire. So there is hell and there is heaven. So at the end of the day, one die or one leave this world and go to heaven or one leave this world and go to hell. So don't allow anybody in your life who teaches there is no hell because they are not helping you. They are dangerous and serious people. When I say serious, they are criminals. We need to reject them and we need to expose people like that with the word of God, not with our knowledge, but with the word of God. So, if you look on the, on the screen today, you when you see, I've already shared with you the scriptures that we're going to need for our teaching today. So, let me start saying that as proved by our teachings yesterday, the soul, but rather, it says that uh, the soul, we're reading about soul, that actually that is taken from the book of uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Uh, Sister Telly, can you put it on the screen for us? Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. It is one of the scriptures from yesterday. One of the scriptures for, uh, from yesterday. And we proved by the following passages, including Matthew chapter um, 10 verse 28, that this is how it reads, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So that is what we read there. And as a matter of fact, we made particular emphasis on the word Jesus Christ used, that is soul, uh, destroy. He said that rather fear, the, uh, fear him or fear the one who can kill and destroy the soul in hell? So the word destroy is very, very important. It's a key word. It's a key word in, in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. So in order to help us to understand fully what is the meaning of that key word, destroy because sometimes if you take it literally you're going to say well god say he would destroy so destroy means just get rid of it complete completely and that is the, the reason why the adventism and the rosalisms when i said the rosalisms they are the followers of justice rose and the followers of justice rose are jehovah witnesses they teach us that the soul sleep and the soul is unconscious when you die. 
which means when you die, you are dead. There's no life for you anymore. So, I showed you this book that if you can get a copy of this book, that will help you. Because every child of God should be a student of prophecy and of the Bible. You don't need to wait for somebody to prophesy. I believe the prophets, their main duty is to read the Bible prophecies and come and tell us what it means. Because some of the things some prophets prophesy and say God says, they are all in the Bible. You don't need them to tell you. It is because of lack of knowledge. That is why we want somebody to prophesy. The prophecies, if you, if you are clever, and if you can listen to them carefully, you can see the prophecies they say they are prophesying, they are all in the promises of the word of God concerning your life. So every child of God is supposed to be a student of prophecy, meaning you get to have time, study the Bible, let the Holy Ghost speak to you, and interpret what the promises of the, of the word of God and the prophecies in the word of God is about. And most importantly, this book here is called Strong Concordance. Strong Concordance. And Strong Concordance has every word, every original word in the Bible. Every original word. When I say every original word, it is the first English or the first English translation from either Hebrew or Aramaic or in Greek that we have in the Bible. Every word is in here. And every word is explain in detail what they mean and why they put it there in the Bible. So, a student of the Bible must have time to go through every word in particular or do word study like uh, the word like the word destroy used in the book of Matthew chapter number 10 verse 28 which also have reference it has a reference in the book of Luke chapter number 9 verse number 56 I read Luke chapter 9 verse number 56 I read for the son of man did not come to destroy so you see the word is here again that means there is destruction there is destruction but here it reminds believers that the son of man Jesus Christ did not come on his first coming he did not come purposely to destroy any human being that is not the purpose Jesus Christ came. The purpose for which Jesus Christ came is to save sinners, not righteous people. He came to save sinners. If you know you are a sinner, you are the reason why Jesus Christ came. He did not come to condemn you. He did not come to condemn sinners, but he came to save sinners. That is why we continue to preach the good news to every creature or creation to repent and receive and accept Jesus Christ, confess him as your Lord and personal Savior. That is all you need to do. You don't need to give thousands of dollars. You don't need to bring a goat, a, a, a bull, a cow, a sheep, or a ram, or whatever you call them. You don't need to pay anything for your salvation. Jesus Christ offered free salvation and free freedom. So, like 
I will continue here in this book, Strong Concordance Dictionary of the Bible, reference number 622. If you have strong concordance, you go into number 622, that is where you see the word destroy is explained. And this is how strong concordance explained from the original translation of the Greek. And the original translation or the original word of the Greek for destroy is to lay waste. Actually, let me give you the, it's a spolome, spolome, which you can pronounce in this vowel. Spolome, spolome, if you want to pronounce the vowels that way. It's a Greek word. I'm not a Greek man. So I'm just saying it the way it sounds. So that is the word destroy. It's spolome. Spolome in Greek means to destroy. And then to destroy means to lay waste. Utterly or to destroy utterly. Utterly. Now. Let's go on. It also means disintegrate. Now, the New Testament, this is how strong concordance continue to explain. The New Testament often use the word to describe spiritual distri uh, distinction or distribution of the word destruction for sinners for sinners and it means or it does not result in annihilation or extinction the word destroy from the original Greek translation is used for sinners and when it's used for sinners to be destroyed, the result is not annihilation. Annihilation is a doctrine of Jehovah Witnesses. Mm -hmm. An extinction. It's a, it's a doctrine of Jehovah Witnesses and pretty much SDA people. Meaning... The sinners will be completely destroyed and removed for once and for all. It's like God will just pack them and then use fire to destroy them once. Once. And then we were only going to see their remain ashes. That is what Jehovah Witnesses teach. And that is a very dangerous teaching. And that is the reason why you get to be very careful of anyone who teach and preach there is no hell because that is not what it means rather it means the state in which sinners will find their, them, themselves in and it, it means a state to destroy means it, it refers to where they will go. That is the original meaning to destroy. So, let's continue. I need more light. As we continue, and behold, there appeared unto the Moses, remember from here, I'm going to explain to you how the inner man is fully conscious between death and life. So all the information I'm going to give you 
or the scriptures I'm going to give you are about people who died and they were still living somewhere and they could communicate or how the Bible describe people who are dead in their condition where they are okay I'm not talking about communicating with the dead bodies I know some people do that when someone is dead they says that uh, the spirit of the dead person has come upon one of the family member or a friend or somebody and they will begin to act funny that is witchcraft that is not what I'm talking about that one is demonic and it is which the spirit of witchcraft that that act that way I'm not talking about that I'm talking about Bible teachings about the consciousness or the life of the soul between death and ratio, uh, uh, death and resurrection. So you get to understand it well. So let's 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 outline our 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 message. Let's outline it. So right here, after you have written your topic as be care, number five be, be careful of anyone who comes to you teach and preach there is no hair subtopic the inner man is fully conscious between death and the resurrection then under the subtopic you can start your outline number one you can start your outline number one and says Moses and Elijah. You can number one is Moses and Elijah. So the scripture we're going to read will be about Moses and Elijah. So let's see. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Talking with him. Was a certain okay, so Moses and Elijah were talking with him. Moses' body was corruption, but not his inner man. We know for Elijah was taken to heaven, he was raptured, but Moses was not raptured. The Bible make it clear that Moses died. He died. So, if Moses died and he appeared to Jesus with Elijah who was raptured to somewhere, that means, and that means there is life somewhere. That means when Moses died, his body decayed somewhere in the earth but his spirit kept living as a human being somewhere in the spiritual world. The Bible passage is Matthew chapter 17 verse 3. Matthew chapter 17 verse 3. And also Deuteronomy chapter 34. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 34, it will tell you more about the death of Moses. It will tell you more about the death of Moses. That is Deuteronomy chapter 34. Take your time and read the entire chapter. And then Matthew 17 verse 3 talks about Jesus Christ with his disciples somewhere and then appeared Moses and Elijah and then the disciples were so happy and then they said we wish we will not go home again or we wish these guys could stay with us here all the time because they enjoy the glory of God with Moses and Elijah. Hmm. So read the scriptures. Or those scriptures. I said all the scriptures I'm giving you. 
are going to show you that there are men who are not in the physical body anymore, but they still have conscious life somewhere. So, if someone is teaching there is no hell, all that they are trying to say is that when someone dies, he's on consciousness. That person is on is unconscious state, which meaning that person is no more driven or no more having life. But everyone that die, it is the body that die, not the spirit in the body that dies. I hope you understand. If you have question or contribution, just post it on Facebook and I'll read and I'll go through. So, let's continue. So, under subtopic number one is Moses and Elijah. And I have read that scripture to you, right? Let's continue. There was a certain rich man. So, let's also, number two, say, number two, Lazarus. Number two, say, Lazarus. Number one is Moses and Elijah. Number two is Lazarus and the rich man. You can, you can write it that way. Number two is Lazarus and the rich man. I'm taking my time to teach you. Okay? So, let, let me start again. Read the whole thing about Lazarus and the rich man. There was a certain man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously. He fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar. I think, Mama Terry, you are waiting for your scripture to put on the screen, so let me do that quick. I'm reading from the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to number 31. So you can put it on the screen. Okay, so we are reading that there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. And there was also a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into his into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus evil things. But now, he is comforted. 
and thou art tormented. And besides all, besides all this, between us and you there, there is great gulf, <coughs> great gulf fixed, so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot either cannot either or neither can they pass to you that will come from thence then he said i pray thee therefore father that you will this send him to my father's house for i have five brothers or brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come to or come into this place of torment abraham said unto him they have moses and the prophets let them hear them and he said unto him if they hear not moses and the prophets and if they hear not Pastor cancer, neither would they be persuaded, though one who rose from the dead. Hallelujah. So you see what this reading passage is trying to tell you. You remember, we are trying to find out that the inner man fully lives conscious between death and resurrection so we're trying to use the scripture to prove to you that there are men who died and their spirit continue to live not dead so number one we've made mention of moses and elijah although elijah didn't die but he was taken from this physical body to another place or this physical world. But Moses died and we're making reference to Moses that he appeared to Jesus and his disciples. And then number two, we're talking about Lazarus. This is from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself making an analogy or trying to show us what it means to go to hell to go to abu samjim using lazarus and a rich man and not only lazarus remember he called abraham's name and abraham is also dead but abraham has been given a position of reception he is the one that receives the, the sins, the dead sins in Christ. The righteous dead in Christ. It is Abraham's duty in paradise to register every dead person in Christ. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? We have people who are in charge of registration. When it comes to taking sensuous, we have people who are in charge of registration. When we are going to do election, we have people who are in charge of registration, make sure that every citizen is registered. So they make announcement for period of time for people to understand that it's important for them to register their names register every family so in heaven it is also important for somebody to be responsible to register the source that comes to heaven and that is the responsibility or the job that has been given to abraham no wonder he is called the father of faith and no wonder the bible says his righteousness, his righteousness and his deeds and faith were credited to him or 
all that Abraham did were credited to his account. That is so wonderful. In this passage, we, are, um, we understand that Jesus Christ says, the rich man live a very good life like some people are living very good life today and don't, they don't care about the poor. The rich man underestimates the poor man. The rich man, some of them, don't even have a respect for common men. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ wants to show us that whether you are rich or you are poor, you're going to die one day. So what happened after death? That was our question when we started. What happens, our de uh, what happens after death? And all the same, what has God for future life of human beings? What does God has for future life for our lives? God has planned for everything. He has planned for now and plan for the future. You don't need to worry yourself. All you need to worry is to give your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Because according to the book of John chapter 14, when you read from verse number 1 to 6, let's read that scripture. It's very beautiful. John chapter 14. I'll read this quick. It says that, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, many mansions. If were not so, I would have not told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And verse number four says, And where I go, you do, you do, where I go, you know. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way. And then up to verse 6 I'm reading. Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, listen to that, no one. He didn't say some people. No one. Or I am the way and the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay? Mama Terry, I started from verse 1 to 6. No one, no Muslim, no religious, religious person come to the Father except me. This is where pastors, when they stand on television and they are talking about we all serve the same God. They don't know what they are talking about. That we all serve the same God. Sister, if you are a Christian, reject the teaching that we all serve the same Lord. We don't serve the same God. Christians of Jesus Christ don't serve the same God with Muslims. Okay? We don't serve the same God with Jehovah Witnesses. Who teaches that there is no hell? And who reject Jesus Christ who died on the cross? And who rejects the blood of Jesus Christ that can heal the sick? We don't serve the same God with Jehovah Witnesses. If you are a Christian, you need to get it clear. I don't know what church you go, what denomination you go, but you read your Bible where? And understand that Christianity, the followers of Jesus Christ, do not serve the same God with Muslims, do not serve the same God with Jehovah Witnesses, and do not serve the same God with anyone who preach and teach there is no hell. We serve the God who created heaven and earth, 
We serve the God who sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on this cross right here and was taken from the cross and was buried in the earth and was resurrected on the third day. And the 12 disciples and the 72 disciples and 5,000 people at one time saw him and many more people saw him. That is the God we served. We serve the God who himself came down as a human being in the form of Jesus Christ. We don't serve a God of people who don't understand that God himself came down to save mankind. That is not the God we serve. We serve a genuine God. We don't serve a false God. Let's continue. So, you understand that talking from Moses, Lazarus, the rich man, Elijah, through Abraham, we have people whose inner man fully lived between death and resurrection. That is all we are trying to tell you today. So, we're going to continue from, let's also see which is the next one. Some of them, uh, we're just going to continue to read and then find some helpful information. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living. You see, God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. So whether you are dead or you still alive, there is life somewhere between death and resurrection. That is the God of the living. He cares for the life of the souls who can communicate with him. Either here or in this world or in other worlds. Okay, so, but not, but of the living. For all life unto him. So, this scripture is taken from the book of uh, Luke chapter 20, verse 38. Luke, I just read from the book of Luke chapter 20, verse 38. It's saying that he's the God of the living, not of the dead. Let's also see how Jesus pictured eternal life to Lazarus' sisters. Lazarus. Lazarus, not the one that we just spoke about. We have the Lazarus with the rich man, and then we have Lazarus, the friend of Jesus Christ. Here, I'm going to talk about Lazarus, the friend of Jesus Christ. And that is taken from the book of John chapter 11 verse 25 to verse number 26 and this is how Jesus said it Jesus said unto her that is Martha the next scripture you need to put on is John chapter 11 verse 25 to 26 John chapter 11 that's what I'm reading now Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me shall never die. Listen to that. He that believes in me shall never die. Believe thou this? Do you believe this I'm talking about? That is John 11, 25, 26. Because thou will not... Okay. So let me hold on here. So this also happened. We're still trying to find that, find out that there is full consciousness or fully consciousness between life, between death and resurrection. Right now, a lot of people are in the line waiting for resurrection. 
A lot of people are waiting in their graves for the resurrection of the body. To go and meet Jesus Christ in the air. And the scripture says that Lazarus used to be a brother of Mary and Martha and also a friend of Jesus Christ. He died. Premature death. Unexpected. He just died. With a, with, a, with a little complaint of headache. Lazarus just gone. And that was a very sad news. Especially when Jesus Christ had. So they called him. And then the sisters, Martha and Mary, wished Jesus Christ would be there. Or was there when Lysos was complaining of sickness so that he can pray for healing. But there was a purpose why Jesus Christ didn't hear anything about his sickness and was not there to be informed that he's sick. God wanted to show his glory. And God also wanted to teach those who have the doctrine of demon that there is no hair and there is no conscious life between death and resurrection that there is still life. So when Jesus Christ got to the place where Lazarus and Lazarus' family were gathered, the Bible say Martha quickly rushed to meet Jesus Christ at the gate and cried out, Oh, Jesus, if you were here, my brother would have not died. And then Jesus replied, Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the manifestation of God and everyone who believes will never die. Didn't I say that to you? The woman continued to argue with her points that well, yeah, you said it, but and I understand that after the resurrection, everybody will, will have life. Jesus said, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that now. Anyone who believes will never die. Hallelujah. And you know that it's going to be a time that people will never die, or some people that live today will never die. Why? Because when Jesus Christ appeared in heaven, the dead will come out from there or they will be resurrected to meet Jesus Christ first. And we who are alive will not die before we meet Jesus. But in a twinkle of an eye, we shall all be caught in heaven to meet Jesus Christ, which Jehovah Witnesses don't believe it. We will be caught in heaven to meet Jesus Christ and Jesus will take us to heaven to hide us there to keep our name registered in heaven for seven good years we'll go there for seven good years and during the seven good good years three days ago I said that is the time that God is going to do renovation on this world. God is going to renovate this world. And that is why we're going to have the war of Armageddon. And that is why you see Russia are so stubborn in this world. The leader of Russia, so stubborn. And that is why you see Iran always trying to manufacture nuclear weapons. And that is why you see and you hear in the news every day this young boy, the 31 or 32, 33 year guy in, in North Korea always manufacturing nuclear weapons. And that is why you hear the news from Americans that they are always serious about people who are doing this because they know where is going to lead the world. 
And what is Armageddon? That is one of the key teachings of Jehovah Witnesses. That there is going to be an Armageddon. Armageddon is a war of the whole world, or it's a war between the whole world and the small nation, Israel. The whole world is going to rise against that small nation and fight them. So, it's going to be under the leadership of the Antichrist or Antichrist. Antichrist is going to be the world president. The last world president. Do you know we have had about seven world president before? We used to have world president. A president who rules the whole world. In the then world, if you don't know some of them, let me just give you a eyes bit of one of them. The pharaohs we mention in the Bible, they were the world president in their days. When you read Bible and you mention, or when you know any history about the pharaohs, they were the one who ruled the whole world. Alexander the Great. Have you, in, in school history, where you thought of anybody that is called Alexander the Great? Read their history. And you are going to find out they were the world presidents. They were the ones that ruled the whole world in their days. We're going to have the last world president. That is going to be the Antichrist. That is why you need to look for a copy of my book and buy it. All this information I in my book here. A student of prophecy. Go to Amazon and it is cheap on Amazon. You can buy it. If you want to buy a copy of this book, just send me a message with your address and I'll tell you the small amount that you need to pay to get this book for free. Or I can send you a copy for free. If I have to send you a copy for free, I will send it to you and read it. All you need to do is maybe, just test me your, your, your information. That, just let me know you need a copy of this book. Hallelujah. So, let's continue. We're talking about the Armageddon. It's going to be very terrible. We're talking about the rapture. It's going to be funny and terrible day. We're talking about the Antichrist. The world president. You need to repent today. And receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Don't let Jehovah Witnesses deceive you. Because everything in the Bible is real. And it will happen. Because the Bible says, for everything that is said in the Bible has to come to pass before the end time. Don't be deceived. Because thou wilt not live my soul in hell. Listen to that. Because, Mama Terry, this is taken from the book of uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 27. Acts chapter 2, verse 27. Remember what I'm doing for today's, uh, in, in today's teaching is to show you that the inner man is fully conscious between death and resurrection. So we are making references of people who died and they're still living somewhere. That is all we are trying to do. So Acts chapter 2, verse 27 I think this scripture is giving references to the book of Psalm, which prophesies about Jesus Christ. It's a prophecy. This is, this is some of the things that the prophets need to interpret to us. Not that I see, I see that in your house, your, your, your grandmother is a witch. That is not a prophecy. That is not what Jesus wants us to learn in the church. So let me continue. Because thou will not live 
my soul in hell. Hell, Gehenna. I told you the meaning of hell, or translation, it's, it's translated from the Greek word Gehenna, hell. And, and it means a, pray, a place of torment. It means lake of fire. It means bottomless pit. Neither will thou suffer, or suffer thy holy one to see corruption in the grave. You understand? So the soul will never, uh, will never suffer corruption in the grave when you die. The soul, the, 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 the person inside you, the inner person inside you that enable you to speak, that enable you to wave your hands, that enable you to walk. That person inside you will never die. Will never die. Jehovah Witnesses and Evangelists are dying. The soul that lives in you is or will continue to be in conscious state, not unconscious after death. Let's continue. The next scripture will be from the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5 says, Wherefore he said, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. So, on our outline, we have Moses and Elijah, number one, and number two, we have Lazarus and the rich man with Abraham. Number three, we're going to have captivity captive. Say captivity captive. We've made references, but point number three, we're going to have captivity captive or set or let captivity captive. Put it that way. Let captivity captive. What does let captivity captive mean? It's like there are some people in prison. And a new government arise. And then give orders to free all the people in prison. Those that were in prison were in captivity. They were in in captive and then the new government set them from their captivity he set them free so what we are reading here let's see wherefore he said when he ascended up on high he led hold on let me see Ephesians chapter 3 verse, let me do that one first, sorry. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 15 says, Because thou wilt not leave my, okay, my soul in hell. Wherefore said, when he ascended up, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity, captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now, that he ascended, what is that, or what is it, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Listen to that, Matthew, if you are there, put Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. You see, we talk about Jesus Christ ascended, went to heaven, but you know before he went to heaven, he first went to hell he first went to hell and he led captivity captive he free all the dead people from hell from the hands of satan and that is in the book of uh, ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 to 10 read it it's a very helpful scripture very helpful scripture Hallelujah. And then he continued to say, 
let me read something quick because of our time let me see I have more information hi yeah 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 hallelujah glory 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 I want that last point to put on the screen okay let me take it from here too but ye are come unto Man Zion and unto the city of the living so here you can say the city of the living God the city of the living God in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15 you have come unto Zion and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company or in, yeah innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men and made perfect and then or oh, and when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the souls of men that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held and they cried out with a loud voice they cried out with a loud voice saying how long, O Lord, holy and true, dwell thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? So here too, the book of Revelation, chapter number 6, verse 9 to 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, give us a picture of a company of people that is from every tribe in heaven in heaven so it's also an evidence that the inner man is fully conscious between death and resurrection so like i said some people inner man are in conscious fully in heaven or are fully in conscious in hell so there is hell that is why you need to be careful of anyone who teach and preach that there is no hell may the lord richly bless you we will continue tomorrow somebody say amen i know that you have learned something today let's continue to expose the false prophets and the false teachers the false evangelists the false apostles and the false pastors so that at the end of the day we will see the glory of god and when jesus christ appear we shall be like him in the name of jesus god richly bless you and stay and remain blessed in the name of our lord jesus christ may god deliver you from the hands of your enemy may god protect you from any accident that has been orchestrated for your life you shall not die premature you are more than a conqueror and god says i know the thoughts that i have for you or concerning your life a thought that would elevate you that would keep you strong that will encourage and strengthen you that will tell you or will make you see yourself as overcomer as a winner not a loser not a failure may god continue to give you strength and understanding in his word in the name of our lord jesus somebody say amen shall we share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ Amen. Hi, 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 hi
in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Oh my God, is that plain or is not plain? Okay. Hallelujah. 